as always, please go ahead and pause the video and try the question on your own before moving on. Because we're dealing with the substance water in this question, it's going to be useful to write down a few constants associated with water. So here we have the latent heat of fusion for water, the latent heat of vaporization also for water. This is the specific heat of liquid water, and then this is the specific heat of ice. We're going to refer to some or maybe even all of these constants throughout this problem. Now, it turns out to be useful in solving these questions to ask a couple of preliminary questions. And the first one is, how much energy is needed to even melt 50 grams of ice? So there's a formula that's going to help us answer this first question. So in this equation, Q is the amount of heat energy, M is the mass of ice, and then LF, as noted earlier, is the latent heat of fusion. Fusion is just the fancy word for melting. So what we'll do is calculate how much heat or energy is needed to melt 50 grams of ice. Notice that because the latent heat of fusion was given in terms of joules per kilogram, we first needed to convert the grams of ice into kilograms of ice using the following conversion that one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. So here the grams will cancel, and then also the kilograms here will cancel with those kilograms, so we're left with just joules. So we have 16,650 joules as being the amount of energy needed to melt 50 grams of ice. Why don't we call this Q1? and set it on the side and refer to it later as we proceed through the problem. The next preliminary question we want to ask is how much energy is needed to warm up 50 grams of melted ice from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius? Because you're changing the temperature in this question, we're going to be using a slightly different formula. So we have the amount of energy equaling the mass of ice times the specific heat of liquid water, because it has melted now, times the temperature change. Notice that the temperature change, of course, was 100 degrees Celsius. Again, notice, too, that we had to convert the grams into kilograms of ice since the specific heat of water was given in terms of joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. In terms of units, the grams here will cancel, as will the kilograms, and so will the Celsius. So we'll be left with joules. So here now is the amount of energy needed to warm up 50 grams of melted ice from 0 to 100 degrees Celsius. Why don't we call this Q2? Okay, so we have those two questions answered and we've put them down here for reference later. Remember, the two processes we're trying to accomplish are to melt 50 grams of ice and then potentially raise the temperature of that melted ice up to 100 degrees Celsius. Now the question is, where does this energy come from? If we want to perform these two processes, where are we getting this energy? And that's coming from the steam condensing. We must realize that as steam condenses, it releases energy and that energy would go into melting the ice and then warming up the melted ice afterwards. So the third question we now have to ask is how much energy can steam at 100 degrees Celsius release? Now condensing is a process in which the temperature does not change, so we're going to use the formula in which the temperature remains constant. Notice also here we're using the latent heat of vaporization because this process involves a, a vapor condensing into a liquid. So now we can fill in the known values. We're going to have to convert 10 grams into kilograms again. So there are the values plugged in and when we perform the calculation we get 22,600 joules. Now again this is how much energy is being released as the steam condenses. Now let's recall that it costs 16,650 joules to melt the ice and then an additional almost 21,000 joules to warm up the melted ice to 100 degrees Celsius. We certainly have enough energy here being released to accomplish fully the first part of the process. This only requires about 17,000 joules. We've got 22,600 being released so we can certainly use that released energy to accomplish the first process, which is the melting of the ice. But there's not going to be enough energy left over to completely warm up the melted ice from 0 to 100. In other words, since there's 23,000 joules available and 17,000 are being spent, there's only about 6,000 joules remaining in order to proceed with the process. So we're just not going to have enough energy to fully raise the temperature from 0 to 100. And so what we need to do now is to calculate what the final temperature of the melted ice is going to be. It's not going to be 100 because we don't have enough energy to get there. It's going to be something less than 100. So to proceed, let's consider the following. 
We know from the conservation of energy that any heat energy released by the steam is going to be gained or absorbed by the ice. And we just have to make sure that we include a negative sign in the equation because remember that released energy is strictly a negative quantity. So we would not be able to set a negative quantity equal to a positive quantity. We have to make sure to maintain an energy balance by sticking a negative sign into the equation. We've already stated that the steam is releasing 22,600 joules worth of energy as it condenses, but afterwards, after it fully condenses, now it's going to continue to release more and more energy, and as it does so, its temperature is going to start changing. So we need an mc delta t term in this left-hand part of the equation. Now for the heat gained by ice, we've already stated that it's going to be about 16,700 joules in order to melt the ice, so that's going to be present on this side of the equation. Notice again the negative sign in front. But after the ice fully melts, then its temperature starts to increase as it absorbs more and more energy, so we're going to need an mc delta t again on this side as well. Now we have the mass of steam and the specific heat of water, so we can fill those in. And then we also have the mass of ice and the specific heat of water, so we can fill those in as well. So please notice a few things about this equation. We've included a negative sign in front of the 22,600 joules because that was heat that was being released as the steam condenses, and released heat is a negative quantity. Also notice that we changed the delta t's into their final temperature minus their initial temperature. We did that here and then we also changed this delta t to final temperature minus initial temperature. The initial temperature of the ice right after it had melted was still zero degrees Celsius and then the initial temperature of the steam right, or, right after it condensed was still 100 degrees Celsius. Certainly a bit complex so if there's any confusion about that please rewind the video and give it a second listen. Now we got a algebraically simplify and solve for TF. So we can multiply the 10 times 1 over 1,000 times 4186 here and do the same kind of thing right here. And then maybe what we can do, TF minus 0 is, is just TF. We can distribute this negative sign to the 16,650 and also to this term over here. I would also distribute the 41.86 through the parentheses here. At this point, it should be relatively straightforward to collect like terms and solve for TF. If you have any questions about how to do that, please let me know. But in the end, TF turns out to be about 40.4 degrees Celsius. And so part A is solved. In part B, there is only one gram of steam. So let's calculate how much energy is released when that steam condenses. This is a similar calculation as before, so we'll run through it more quickly this time. So in this case, the amount of heat energy released as the steam condenses is only 2,260 kilojoules. Remember that it required almost 17,000 to completely melt 50 grams of ice, so there's no way that this amount of energy is going to melt all of the ice. And so actually, since, since ice still remains, the final temperature is simply going to be zero degrees Celsius. That's the temperature of, of ice. So that's actually rather easy. We don't need a calculation. In other words, as long as there's some ice present, then the temperature has to be at zero degrees Celsius, the freezing point of, of water. But what we can calculate is how much of the ice actually did melt. So we're going to take this 2,260 kilojoules and we're going to use that to melt the ice. So we turn back to the idea that however much heat energy is released will equal the negative of the amount of heat absorbed. The ice is absorbing energy as it melts, and then there are two sources of heat being released. There's the condensing of the steam that we've already mentioned, and then there's the temperature change of the steam as it cools from 100 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. And then again, the ice will be absorbing that heat, and it's going to be melting as it does so. So when we solve this equation, we end up with about 0 0.008 kilograms of melted ice. And if you prefer, you can change that into grams by just moving the decimal three times over to the right. So about eight grams of ice has melted in part B of the question. And remember the final temperature was zero degrees Celsius since there was still some ice present.